Hi everyone, welcome to another session of the HP of Files. In today's session, we will be solving problems about projectile motion. Let's begin. For the first problem, a car driver is traveling at speed V on a straight road. He comes over the top of a hill to find a fallen tree on the road ahead. He immediately brakes hard, but travels a distance of 60 meters at speed V before the brakes are applied. That means the brakes were applied at this point. The skid marks left on the road by the wheels of the car are at length 140 meters. The police investigate whether the driver was speeding and establish that the car decelerates at 2.0 meters per second squared during the skid. That means after the 140 meter distance skid, uh, the final velocity of the car will be zero. That means it stopped moving. For the first uh, question, determine the initial speed V of the car before the brakes are applied. Let's look at our given information. First, the final velocity is equal to zero. Notice that I placed inside the parentheses the representation for the final velocity to avoid confusion because this is how we represent the final velocity in the formula. The displacement will be 140 meters. This is positive since we are going, or the car was going to the right in this illustration. The acceleration will be negative 2.0 meters per second squared. Since the car was slowing down and the velocity was directed to the right, that means acceleration is directed to the left. That's why it's negative. We are then asked to find the initial velocity. Now, looking at the four equations of motion, you can see that all four equations contain the initial velocity, but three of them contain time. Equations one, two, and three. Since time is not yet known, we then use the fourth equation. Manipulating this equation to solve for the initial velocity, we have the square root of d squared minus 2as. Substituting the given values, we obtain the initial velocity to be positive 23.7 meters per second. But since the problem was only asking for the initial speed, we'll only be using the magnitude of this initial velocity, which means the initial speed is 23.7 meters per second. Next question. Determine the time taken between the driver coming over to the top of the hill, meaning this point, and applying the brakes. So at this point. Notice that in this part of the motion, we know that the, uh, the car was traveling at a constant speed of 23.7 meters per second. And since it's constant speed and direction, the direction did not change, therefore acceleration is also zero. The distance traveled was 60 meters. And then we are asked to solve for the time. To solve for the time, we simply use the equation speed is equal to distance over time. We then have uh, the time to be equal to distance over speed, which is 60 divided by 23.7, giving us a time of 2.53 seconds. Third question. The speed limit on the road is 100 kilometers per hour. Determine whether the driver was breaking the speed limit. We are given with this information, the speed in kilometers per hour. So all we have to do is uh, express this speed in meters per second and compare it to the speed of the car. So that means we simply have to multiply the speed in kilometers per hour to these conversion factors. So 1R is equal to 3,600 seconds and 1,000 meters is equal to 1 kilometer, giving us this speed in meters per second. 
Notice that the car is traveling at 23.7 meters per second, while the speed limit is 27.8 meters per second. That means the driver was not breaking the speed limit. Second problem, a hot air balloon rises vertically. At time t equals zero, a ball is released from the balloon. The figure below shows the variation of the ball's velocity v with respect to t. The ball hits the ground at time is equal to 4.1 seconds. Okay, so let's illustrate the given problem. This is the reference level or the ground. This is the balloon that rises vertically with this speed. Since the ball and the balloon will be considered to be uh, as one system, once the, bal uh, the ball is released from the balloon, it will also have this initial velocity, which is upwards or vertically upwards. For the first question, explain how the graph shows the that the acceleration of the ball is constant. Remember that when we're dealing with velocity versus time graphs, the gradient of the graph represents acceleration. Notice that here the graph is linear and the gradient is constant, which means the acceleration is also constant. Next question. Uh, here we have determined the time at which the ball reaches the highest point. Notice that this ball initially has a vertical velocity that's directed upwards. That means the ball will travel a certain distance, a certain vertical distance, then reaches its maximum point where it becomes momentarily at rest meaning the velocity is zero. Then the velocity changes direction so that it can fall down. Now, since at maximum point, the velocity is zero, we only have to find the value of time at which velocity is zero. And that will be at time is equal to 1.55 seconds. Notice that beyond 1.55 seconds, the value of the velocity is now negative, which corresponds to this part of the motion of the ball. Next question, determine the distance between the highest point reached by the ball and the ground. So our next task is to find this vertical distance. Okay, now there are two ways to solve this problem. First is by utilizing this given area over here. Notice that when we get the area under the graph of a uh, velocity versus time graph, we can get the displacement. Okay. But since we are only um, concerned with the distance, then we will be disregarding the signs. So to find the area, we have 4.1 minus 1.55, which refers to this interval in the time, multiplied by 25, the difference or the interval in the velocity, divided by 2, since we're only considering half of the area. This gives us a total area, area of 31.9 meters. So that means the vertical distance between the highest point and the ground will be 31.9. Meters. Now, the second way of solving this is by using the given values. We know that if we consider the motion of the object from the highest point going down to the ground, its initial velocity will be zero. The time will be 2.55 seconds. That's 4.1 minus 1.55. And then, of course, the acceleration will be equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. To find the vertical distance, we must solve for the displacement. If you check the four equations of motion, three equations will contain the displacement, but the other two will contain the final velocity. 
which means we can use this equation to solve for the displacement. Substituting the given values, we then obtain the displacement to be negative 31.9 meters. This is negative because the uh, starting point of the motion is here. So going down means it's negative. But since we only need the distance or vertical distance, therefore, we drop the sign, giving us 31.9 meters, which is the same with our answer in the previous method. Okay. Third problem, an airplane is traveling horizontally at a speed of 80 meters per second and drops a crate of emergency supplies. To avoid damage, the maximum vertical speed of the crate on landing is 20 meters per second. You may assume a resistance is negligible. The first question is asking us to calculate the maximum height of the airplane when the crate is dropped. Let's enlarge the given illustration and let this rectangle represent the crate of emergency supplies. Initially, the crate only has um, an initial horizontal velocity, but once it is dropped, it will have a vertical component of velocity as well. Therefore, tracing this trajectory. Now, in this question, we are asked for this maximum height. Of course, this maximum height should be the height where the crate can drop safely, meaning there's no damage. Based on the problem, we have the following information. In the vertical direction, initial velocity of the crate is zero. Remember, the crate was dropped. Its final uh, vertical velocity will be negative 20 meters per second, since this is the maximum uh, velocity that the crate can have to avoid damage once it uh, reaches the ground. Next, the acceleration will be equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And then we are asked to solve for the displacement since, uh, since we are dealing with height. Looking at these four equations of motion, three of them will contain the displacement, equations two, three, and four. But notice that equations two and three both contain time, which is unknown as of the moment. That means that, uh, we will be using the fourth equation. Manipulating this equation to solve for the displacement, we have d squared minus u squared over dA. Substituting the given information, we have the displacement to be equal to negative 20.4 meters. Since we are only concerned with height, which is a scalar quantity, therefore we'll be writing the height to be 20.4 meters. Next question. Calculate the time taken for the crate to reach the ground from this height. Again, we list down the information that we have for the vertical uh, motion or vertical part of the motion. So initial velocity is zero, final velocity should be negative 20 meters per second. Acceleration will be negative 81 and uh, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. But this time we'll be looking for time. Notice that in the previous question, we also solved for the displacement. That means we can use any of these four equations. But notice that if you look at the first question, we can have a simpler computation. So using the first equation and solving for time, we will obtain 2.04 seconds. That means the time it takes for the crate to reach the ground will be 2.04 seconds. And then third question, the airplane is traveling at the maximum permitted height. Calculate the horizontal distance traveled by the crate after it is released from the airplane. So 
the maximum permitted height was the one that we solved a while ago, we are now asked for this information, the horizontal distance traveled by the tape. Notice that for the horizontal direction, we know that the um, initial velocity of the tape was negative 80 meters per second. But since we're only concerned with the distance, we can then just use the horizontal speed, which is 80 meters per second. Also, we know that the time it takes for the tape to travel this horizontal distance is also this time, 2.04 seconds. Why? Because the crate falling down and traveling this horizontal distance were happening at the same time. So for this question, we are asked to solve for the distance. We will be using the uh, equation, um, speed is equal to distance over time. Notice that if you look at the four equations of motion, uh, specifically the second one, since acceler acceleration is zero, this equation reduces to displacement is equal to velocity times time, which is um, consistent with this equation. Speed is equal, to, is equal to distance over time. So calculating for the distance, we have speed times time, and sub substituting the given values, we have distance is equal to 163 meters. That means while the crate was falling down, it is also traveling a horizontal distance of 163 meters. So that's it. I hope everything's clear. And thank you for learning with me today, guys. See you in the next session of the HDL class.